we all need each other, right, in this journey of discipleship. <laughs> sometimes we do need to be reminded to walk and sometimes to run. That is certain. Thanks, kids. Have such a fun time in kids' church. I wonder, for those of us who are not left behind, but left, left in here, have you ever said to someone, I'll be praying for you? I'll be praying for you. Yeah. Or has anyone ever said to you, oh, I'll be praying for you? Probably. You've, you've heard, maybe you've heard that before. I don't know about you, but I'm often on both sides of that phrase. The one to receive it, certainly, and then also the one to offer it. And I'll be the first to admit that when that phrase comes out of my mouth, I find myself caught, convicted, even. I begin thinking, will I really remember to pray for that person? I don't even know what to say to God about this. So how could I ever pray for them? Because I don't even know what to say. And then I get to thinking, well, does prayer really do anything? Will God listen to me if I don't have the right words or, or the right theology to pray? What, what if it comes out more demanding of God or manipulative of God or, or unrefined? Will God even hear it? I don't stand up here today as an expert in praying for people. I really am not. You should see the notes app on my phone. That's how I remember to pray for people. And then sometimes I forget to open the notes app on my phone to pray for people. I do not offer these words to you, to me, to us as someone with a pedigree of, of spiritual practice in this. But actually as someone who has learned from the example of others. As someone who literally wants to practice what she preaches. We're in this series called Bless. B-L-E-S-S. -S. I don't spell it out because you don't know how to spell the word. I spell it out because it is an acronym. This series on BLESS invites us to bless the world with the love of Jesus. That's pretty simple, isn't it? You see, we are good news bringers. The literal translation of evangelists is good news bringers. And we are seeking to bless others just like God blesses us. So B-L-E-S-S -S is an acronym. It's a, a recipe for our action in the world. Begin with prayer, B, B, listen with care, eat together, serve in love, and share your story. And today, we are beginning with prayer. If we want to set out to bring the good news uh, of God to the world, but we don't first meet with God then we don't actually avail ourselves to what God wants, then I would argue that we are not in the practice of blessing, we're just in the practice of being nice. The kind of prayer, this beginning with prayer, the kind of prayer that we are beginning with is called intercession. And it's different than a petition, help. It's different than thanksgiving, thanks. It's different even than contemplation, wow. Intercession seeks to join us to the creator of the universe through the person of Jesus Christ. And we're going to read about that and uh, receive God's word for us in Romans chapter 8. If you have a Bible, uh, would you open that up? Uh, we're going to jump around a little bit in Romans 8, just a smidgel, and so I don't want to lose you. Uh, the words will be on the screen, and maybe you'll recognize uh, some of these words as we go along. We will read uh, Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 34. We'll go 34 and 35, and then we're going to do a little jump to 38 and 39. Romans is uh, the sixth book. In the New Testament? Is my math right? Yes! It's the sixth book in the New Testament. You can find it nearly around there in your Bible. Okay? Okay. Starting in verse 34. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Interceding for us. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Jumping to verse 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Boy, we could just walk out the doors with that, couldn't we? And we will. And we will. Nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God because Christ is interceding for us. Christ is interceding for us. Intercession uh, means to intervene on the, the, on the behalf of of another. And it's common to use this word to describe a certain kind of, of prayer when we go to God for the benefit of another person, right? I'll pray for you about that, or they'll pray for me about that. And what the Apostle Paul says here is that, that actually Jesus is doing this for us. Jesus prays for you, for me. This is one of those times that it could be very easy to skip over this idea just as like a cute thing in the Bible, right? Like, the Lord is my shepherd. It's lovely. Uh, or um, uh, uh, Mo uh, Moses brought things into the ark. That's not true. Uh, Noah brought things into the ark. Oh, so cute. That, but I really don't want us to move past this as just being cute. Oh, Jesus prays for me. Jesus prays for you. And not in a general way that we pray things. God bless this food we eat, or, or, or Jesus help that person somehow. No. Jesus prays for us because Jesus knows what we need. Jesus knows what we need even more than we know what we need. Even more. Jesus knows God's love for us better than we could ever know. Jesus knows what we need, and Jesus knows God's infinite love. And right in that space is intercession. My mother-in-law has a spiritual gift of gift giving, all right? And this greatly benefits me, actually. What's wild about it is that she can give me gifts that meet a need or perhaps a want uh, that I didn't even know that I had. I mean that very sincerely, actually. It's not like she gives me junk and then like, oh, I have to figure out how to need this or want this. No, it's stuff that I actually need or want. There have been times when a gift has shown up on our doorstep, the wonder of Amazon, uh, and it had been something that I had wanted or, or needed for a while, but I actually had never even told anyone about that. And then I've asked her, like, are you listening in to my brain? Are you like Alexa? You know, because you can... Like, she listens to you, and then all of a sudden, these things show up in your ads, right? It's, this is like my mother-in-law. I knew it first before Alexa was even a thing. One time, she gifted me a, a bag. Uh, and, and it arrived the day, that, the day after a strap broke on, on the bag that I was using for work. And I was carrying my bag around like this, because... That's what I had to do. And so this bag shows up all perfect and new with straps that actually held the bag. And I couldn't believe it. It's like she knew that my bag was going to break or something like that. I don't even know. I do know that she talks to Jesus a lot and maybe that's what's happening. It's pretty remarkable. I swear she's in my head. There is something profound, profound about trusting that Jesus is in the space between us. That Jesus is in the space for us, communicating our needs and loves in ways that are particular to us because he loves us so much. And this is not a, a, an exhausting thing for Jesus. It is Jesus' delight to intercede. So I wonder, what do you think could you even wonder about what Jesus is praying for you right now? What is Jesus praying for you specifically 
in this very moment of your life. If Jesus is interceding for us, then certainly Jesus is interceding with the people that we love. These frank people. Last week, Pastor Paul talked about these people in your life, and he divided them out for you um, in friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, and co-workers or classmates. Frank, okay? There's a lot of acronyms going around, and we'll, we'll settle into it. He invited you to consider who are the people that I'm in proximity with that Jesus might be inviting me to bless. Simple. Who is it? Who are those people? If we're going to bring that uh, uh, list into our prayer, or if we're going to bring prayer into that list, we first have to wonder about what Jesus knows. Does Jesus know what they need? The answer is yes. And does Jesus know the depth of God's love for them? The answer is yes. And so if we are going to begin with prayer, then we would do best to actually join Jesus in what Jesus is praying. Not coming up with our own words, but joining Jesus. I'll be honest, this challenges my idea of prayer. Because I think I've left prayer out of my discipleship. You heard that right. I wrote that down, and I wanted to make sure it was the truth. I think that I have left prayer out of my discipleship. And what I mean is that I have not considered that I could follow Jesus into his prayers for me and for others. I have thought it had to be me that did all the work to pray for the person so that they might be changed by the love of Jesus. See what I've done there? I've made myself the Savior. It's actually not up to me. It's not up to me to come up with good words or great ideas for the other people that I want to experience the love of Jesus. I actually just get to simply follow Jesus into intercession. When someone brings me their needs or requests, instead of just saying, oh yes, I'll pray for you, what I will mean, maybe I'll even get to say it, is actually I'm going to follow Jesus into his prayers for you. I'm going to get closer to Jesus so that I might hear his voice when he prays for you. And then I'll pray it a little louder. <laughs> maybe it'll change me in the process. In joining Jesus' intercession, we don't make ourselves out to be something that we are not. We are actually properly placed in our discipleship. When we join Jesus, it means that we're not triangulating ourselves in God's relationship with another person. Thinking that if we don't pray, if we don't intercess for the other person, then we have failed that person and we have failed God. This is again, placing ourselves as the savior, which we are not. To approach prayer this way, in the savior model, it makes our efforts the cause for spiritual transformation, not the presence of the Spirit and not the love of God. We become what we, we think we become, the mode of transformation. I have to be honest, I'm, I'm considering this whole work of intercession, intercession in an entirely different way. You see, I've been prompted uh, to pray for people who I perceive do not know Jesus. And for a long time, uh, the, my story is that I grew up in the church. And so for a long time, I grew up thinking, well, you have to pray for the people in your life that don't know Jesus. And so time and time again, I would make the same requests of God for certain people in my life. Uh, bring them back to church, God. Bring them into a faith community. Help them remember their baptism. God, convert them. We talk a little bit about the, the people that we know that, that God is inviting us into, those people who might be on our frank list. And we talked about this at staff meeting a few weeks ago in preparation for 
Paul's sermon last week, where Jesus prays for his followers. And so Pastor Paul invited us to consider Jesus' prayer for the people that we have been invited to bless. And I had on my list people that I have wanted to bless for a long time, years and years and years. And I was startled, actually, by what I perceived the prayers would be. The prayers shifted for these people. And in praying Jesus' words, words from John 17, my prayer changed. And I started to pray that, that for these people that I dearly love, that Christ's joy may be complete in them. Nothing about church, nothing about decisions or, or conversions just yet. No, all I want is that Christ's joy may be complete in them. Now I'm starting to wonder, is that what Jesus is praying for these loved ones of mine? That Christ's joy may be complete in them? Following Jesus into his prayers for us, and following Jesus into Jesus' prayers for others, it rejects a formula, it rejects an outcome, it, it diminishes a goal. It actually is the work of getting to know Jesus himself for ourselves and then for our neighbors. We are first changed by this prayer. And then the people that we join in intercession for, perhaps they might be changed. This is the good news, that we might be changed by the love of Jesus. This is the stuff that we walk around with and we live with and we breathe in our evangelism, in our good news bringing. And this is why fear tactics and threats of eternal condemnation don't work in our good news bringing. Because those things are not the driving force of the good news of the gospel. What makes the good news good is that nothing, we read it, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. In a world that feasts on separation, on division, on othering people, on excluding, on wounding, on ignoring, the truth that separation is not God's best is the best news. I know of and, and I can imagine the variety of scenar scenarios and experiences that you walk into this room with. Those things that make you wonder, am I separated from God? Or do the people I love, are they separated from God? Does God even see me? Does God know me? Does God notice? What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Is it trouble, stress, anxiety, or conflict? No. Is it hardship? Is it suffering? Is it destitution? No. Is it persecution? Our adversaries? Institutional inequality? Is it racism? No. Does famine separate us from the love of God? Poverty? Hunger of the soul? Perhaps even lack of resources? No. Does nakedness? Our own vulnerability? No. Does danger, threats to our well-being, or risks we might encounter, or fear? No. Does the sword, violence we have committed, or violence committed against us? No. Does death separate us? The grave, the dust of our remains, our finiteness? No. Does life does joy separate us or our children or our ability to breathe, our autonomy? No. Do angels separate us? The good things we do, our successes, our achievements? No. Do demons? Our mental health? 
Those things that afflict us, do they separate us from Jesus? No. Does the present, the very moments we find ourselves in and how we find ourselves in them? No. Does the future, the unknown of what is to come, separate us from the love of Christ? No. Do any powers, the authority of, of, of governments or institutions, do those separate us from the love of Jesus? No. Does height? No. Our pride, our victories? Absolutely not. Does depth, our failures, our regrets, our guilt, our shame, does that separate us from the love of Jesus? No. Or anything else? The Apostle Paul says, he wants you to be sure. Anything else in all of creation, anything you could think or perceive or experience or imagine, can any of those things separate us from the love of Jesus? No. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. This is the space we pray into. This is the space we pray into for others. Maybe, maybe this is the space you pray into for yourself. This is the truth that we carry in our bodies through intercession. You see, as we are joining Jesus in intercession, we come to see how true this really is for the ones we love. Maybe how, how true it really is for ourselves. In our work of evangelism, in the work of being good news bringers, I want to offer us these last few verses, verses 38 and 39, to be the prayer that we walk around with for the people in our life. I want you to think of, of one person that has been on, been, uh, that Jesus has invited you to bless. Maybe it's really obvious to you. Maybe you're wondering. I wonder if we insert that person's name into verses 30, uh, 35, 38, and 39. I wonder how that changes our intercessory prayer for them. I'll put my name in, not to be prideful, uh, but also not to call out anyone else. <laughs> Hear it this way. I'll have you insert the name of the person you're thinking of. You could even pray for yourself. Who shall separate Britta from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate Britta, insert name here, from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Maybe you need to keep your little ribbon in your Bible right there in Romans 8. Maybe you need to write this down on a sticky note. Maybe you need to write this down in the notes app on your phone and that you might be able to be to pray this prayer for the people that you know Jesus loves, that you know Jesus is already interceding for. We're going to have a time where you might do this tangibly. And this is only invitation. Let me be clear. We do not want to coerce you or force you into anything. But we want to give tangibility to this thing called prayer. We want to give uh, legs to it so that you might, might be reminded again and again of this work of intercession that you join Jesus in. And so we're going to do that um, by investing in this. <laughs> and what I mean is, uh, you have people that God has invited you to bless. You may know their name. You may know their initials. You may be able to see their face in your mind. And what we want you to do, what we're inviting you to do, I should say, uh, is to offer a depiction of that person, however you want to do this, your uh, creativity is yours, onto the wood frame um, of this installation, shall we call it, 
We want you to do that, not because we think that's going to be magic, but because our community could get to also intercede with Christ for that person with you. All right? There's, there's some multiplication going on here. And so I would invite you, you may know the initials and you may feel comfortable putting those up there. You might be an artist and want to draw a picture. Would you please draw a picture? Um, and so we're, we're going to, here's the process. Uh, soon we will go to the table for communion. You'll receive communion, and then when and if you would like, you can head up these lovely stairs. There's going to be someone here to help you up the stairs because we want you to be careful. All right? And there's some Sharpies here, and people can, you can write or depict that person or those people onto this piece of wood. If, I'm going to take a little trip. If it is either uncomfortable for you to walk up or... Uh, you just would feel more comfortable doing this separately. We have this other piece of wood that can travel. Uh, and it will travel with Sharpies so that you might be able to do the same. Not be left out, um, but not be forced up onto there. Our kids are also going to be drawing on this one. This is going to be a beautiful masterpiece. Who then shall separate us from the love of God? No one. Nothing in all of creation could ever do that. This is the good news that you walk around with. This is the good news that settles into your soul. This is the good news that invites you into intercession for yourself, for others, for the sake of the world, because Jesus is there. Would you pray with me?